Welcome to another one of my kinematics videos. In all my previous videos, we talked about kinematics or projectile motion in one dimension. And in this video, we're going to talk about projectile motion in two dimensions. All right, but before I get started, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Chris, and I'm here to help you with all your math and physics needs. Uh, but before I get started, I want to let you know I do offer homework solutions. So if you need any extra help with your homework, uh, send me an email to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com. Uh, once again, send me an email to homework solutions at mathmeeting.com. Send me pictures of all of your problems and I will get back to you immediately with a quote. But let's not waste any more time and let's get started right away with this example. So the first thing I want to talk about is the difference between one-dimensional and two-dimensional kinematics or projectile motion. So let's start off by talking about one-dimensional projectile motion. All my previous kinematics videos were we were solving problems in one dimension. So the ball was moving vertically, down or up, or the ball was moving or the projectile was moving horizontally, right, or to the left. All right, but with two-dimensional projectile motion, um, the, the projectile can move both vertically and horizontally. Like this ball, for example, is moving 30 degrees up from the horizontal. So it's moving horizontally to the right and it's moving vertically up as well. So that is the main difference uh, between two-dimensional and one-dimensional projectile motion. But the cool thing is, is that these kinematic formulas that we're going to use are exactly the same for both two-dimensional and one-dimensional projectile motion. So I'm going to explain to you um, how we could use these same exact formulas for two-dimensional projectile motion right now. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at this ball that's being launched at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. All right, and let's say that this ball is being launched at a speed of 50 meters per second. And what we need to do is separate this velocity of 50 meters per second into a horizontal component and to a vertical component. Um, and we know this ball is moving up and to the right. So we know it's going to have a horizontal component moving to the right. And it's going to have a vertical component, component uh, moving up. So let's call the horizontal component the velocity in the x direction. And we'll call the vertical component the velocity in the y direction. All right, and the cool thing we can do is we can use trigonometry or right triangles to solve our vertical velocity and to solve for our horizontal velocity. All right, we know that this vertical, vertical velocity, Vy, is the opposite side of 30 degrees. So I'm going to label it opposite. Uh, we know that this horizontal side is the adjacent side to 30 degrees. And we know that this 50 meters per second is the hypotenuse of the right triangle. And now we can use so katoa to solve this right triangle. All right, so is sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is the cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And those are the only two that we're going to need to use. All right, so our we'll start with the sine. So the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Our opposite side is equal to Vy. So this is equal to Vy over the hypotenuse, which we know is 50. So it's going to be over 50. And if we rewrite this equation in terms of our vertical velocity, our vertical velocity, Vy, is going to be equal to 50 times the sine of 30 degrees. All right, and we know that the sine of 30 is equal to 1 half. So the vertical velocity is equal to 50 times 1 half, or 25. So we know that the vertical velocity, V sub Y, is equal to 25 meters per second. All right, so now let's do the same thing for our horizontal velocity. Let's go back to our so katoa. This time we're going to use ka. Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So our, our cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the adjacent side. We know the adjacent side is our horizontal velocity, Vx, over the hypotenuse, which the hypotenuse we know is 50 meters per second. So Vx over 50. 
All right, and if we rewrite this in terms of our horizontal velocity, Vx, we know that Vx is going to be equal to 50 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And we know that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So our horizontal velocity, Vx, is equal to 50 times the square root of 3 over 2. All right, so V sub x, our, hor our horizontal velocity is equal to 50 times the square root of 3 over 2. And once again, our units are in meters per second. All right, so now that we've separated everything into our vertical and our horizontal components, and now we can use our kinematic formulas. And the one thing that you have to remember is that you have to stay consistent either using your vertical components or your horizontal components. Uh, for example, we have to use, if we're going to use this first equation right here, we have to use either all vertical components or all horizontal components. So let's say we have the final velocity in the vertical direction or the y direction, then our initial velocity also has to be in the y direction, and the acceleration also has to be in the y direction, and time does not have a direction, so you don't have to worry about t. Um, so you get the idea. For the next equation, let's say we're using this equation underneath, and we're say, let's say if the, the displacement or delta x is in the x direction, that means that our velocity, our initial velocity, also has to be in the x direction. And the acceleration also has to be in the x direction, uh, x direction as well. So you have to stay consistent um, with your units. Um, everything either has to be in the uh, vertical direction x, sorry, vertical direction y, or in the horizontal direction x. So in my next video, we're going to use these kinematic formulas in two dimensions. We're going to have to separate all of the horizontal components and our vertical components. So check out that video um, if you want to keep on learning. Once again, I do offer homework solutions, so send me an email to homeworksolutions at mathmeeting.com if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.